So it's been about a week since I've touched this painting. It's all completely dry right now. Um, first thing I saw when I came back to it was a pattern. When you do things sometimes out of your head, uh, you tend to go the same thing over and over and over again. Although I think that this portion of the sky looks really, really good. We've got a, a one, two, three level of the of the, these di uh, horizontal clouds. So I'm gonna to try to fix this, mostly by bringing this one up, make it a little bit larger, so that we don't have a uniformity. Uh, and then I'm gonna come back in and highlight some of the tips, uh, portions of these clouds where the sun's hit and stuff. And then I'm going to try to fill in the rest of the cloud cover back in between the figures. So another thing that you probably notice is the difference in the way the colors look. I'm in a different studio today, uh, up in the gallery. We have natural north light, and uh, so my colors look a lot different than they did back in the studio. Um, and overall, it all tends to work out. So I'm just gonna go ahead and expand this, this cloud cover right here. Make this cloud a little bit different shape. Try not to lose any of what I've already got there. When you're doing something like this, you have to blend in the wet with the dry. So I've kind of come back over top of the edge of this cloud here. And all I have to do is just get some of that same color and uh, then go back over what I just put on. If you don't do that, it's gonna look like you've gone back and touched it up. And even though I have gone back and touched it up, I don't want people to know that I did it. Of course, now I've got this video going, so everybody's gonna know. You can get some really nice effects with it. I'm gonna go back down in here and do the same with the, the tops of these clouds also. So I've got some of this stuff up here blocked in. I'm not sure what I'm gonna do, but right now I'm gonna get back, try to finish up this corner. This guy is pretty much done right now. Um, I think that I, I'm sure I'll have to go back over and do some other stuff, but uh, or re repair some things and fix some things. But for right now, I think that it's pretty well done. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and start doing some of the figures in the far background in the upper left hand One side. One thing that I'm doing is using a limited palette. Uh, I have actually Cad Yellow Pale. Cadmium Red Light, Alizarin Crimson, which is a very cool red, and French Ultramarine Blue, which is almost color crayon blue. And between those colors, I've been able to get all these beautiful violets, pinks, oranges, and yellows in my first figure on the horse. He's right up there. Okay, now I'm gonna go ahead and do this next right, right here. I want them to be very vibrant at this distance. And all their heads are just a round circle, more or less, over the neck. This one still needs a lot of work. I'm going to work on it and I'll show you what I've done. Today I'm going to go ahead and start this second uh, row of riders. You might be wondering why I decided to do this painting. I started it last year in 2013 around April. As a born-again Christian, I've been feeling like God wanted me to use my talents not only for my own glory, but, but for His. You know, the gift was from Him, and I may as well use it to glorify Him. With this painting, I actually felt like God gave me a vision for what I did, should do. 
In Revelations 19, 11 through 16, it describes Jesus' return to earth during the Battle of Armageddon, where he comes to rescue the nation of Israel that's surrounded by all of its enemies ready to defeat it. Jesus came the first time as a suffering servant, a sacrificial lamb who took the place of all mankind when he was slaughtered on the cross. The next time he comes, he'll be as a conquering king who will wipe out the enemies of God and set up his kingdom on earth. Jesus is coming in the clouds, riding on a white horse. He's wearing a robe that is dipped in blood, so therefore it's going to be red. He has the words, Lord of Lords and King of Kings written on his robe and on his thigh. He's also wearing many crowns with a sharp sword in his, in his mouth. I decided to just put one simple crown that could be worn into battle and put the sword, which is a symbol of the Word of God, in his hand. I also wrote the title, King of Kings, Lord of Lords, on his trousers. His army is all dressed in white linen and also riding white horses. Once I got the image into my mind, I immediately went to work. I started working on the poses of the horses without the riders. I wanted to come up with a good composition, you know, placing all the horses in the right spot. I prayed about it a lot and thought about it constantly, and I worked for several days, if not weeks, on it, putting it all together. Once I finished the horses, though, I got busy with a couple of commissions, and then after that I started procrastinating because I knew I'd have to find some people who would be willing to pose like riders on horses. I knew that people would feel a little bit self-conscious posing like that, so I just didn't address it for a while. One day I was at work, and my father-in-law, Ron, called to tell me that he'd been praying about our family and praying about my work and my art. And he says, while I was in the middle of this prayer, I felt like God just gave me an idea for a painting for you. And he says, I don't ever think about these things, but this is, I really feel like this is what God told me. He says, have you ever thought about doing a painting of Jesus coming back? You know, wearing the blood-dipped robe, riding the white horse with his armies all in white clothing and white horses. <laughs> and I, I just started laughing and I said, Ron, I said, if I were to describe to you the painting that I'm already working on, it would have been almost word for word what you told me. And it was, it was just so great. And he was saying, oh yeah, you know, he's just, this is, I really felt like this was something God wanted me to tell you. And I said, well, evidently it is because that's exactly what God has been telling me. And uh, there was a, it was a total confirmation that I was supposed to be doing the painting and also a nudge saying, stop procrastinating and get to work. So a couple days after that, I got some calls made and lined some models up. So the first person I called was my good friend David Corrales, who used to be a chaplain out of Bay Meadows and Golden Gate Fields for the Racetrack Chaplains of America. Also got our sons Luke and Matt and Daniel all to pose. Luke and Daniel were riders, and Matt will be one of the angels, the one holding the trumpet. I even included my wife, Catherine, as the angel with long hair. Mark Mitchell, who's the senior pastor at Central Peninsula Church in Foster City, where we go to church, well, he posed as Jesus. Even his assistant, Mike Northcote, got, got in, the, in the middle of it, and um, he's the rider, just a couple riders behind Jesus. One of the things my father-in-law also suggested when he called me that day was that I should use angels. I'd already got the composition together, all my riders, all my horses, and I thought, you know what, I, I don't really have room for angels. I don't, I don't really feel like I'm going to put angels in it, and I really balked at it. And I said, you know, okay, I'll go ahead and I'll pray about it. And then I ran it by my wife, Kathy, and she says, you know, go ahead and add, add the angels. I think it'll really add to it and make it better. As I was doing it, I got a chance to talk to a lot of different people. You know, they'd come in and they'd look at it and they'd they wonder what it was all about and what it represented. And, and a lot of people, they knew exactly what it was. They knew it was Jesus coming back for the second coming. But there were also a lot who didn't know what it was. And they thought, well, and I said, well, what do you think it is? When they'd ask me, and they say, well, is it Braveheart? Or is it, uh, is it some kind of fantasy war or something that happened way back, back in the olden times? And, and so they really had no idea. <clears throat> and as an artist, I feel it's much better for people to figure out what is represented than to have it to explain it to him. So then I realized, you know what, I really do need to put angels in this painting. Everybody knows that angels are God's servants, so even if they don't know exactly what is going on, they know that it has something to do with God. As I just mentioned, I've had a chance to talk to, about God and my faith to a lot of people while working on this painting. I actually got to witness to over 20 people about Jesus. Well, that alone is probably enough reason to do it. 
But I also think that God will use this to remind us as Christ followers, as Christians, that the time is short. We're living in the last days and that we need to be not complacent. We need to not be complacent, but to get the news out there that judgment is coming, that the end is near. The way that the world events are right now and the fact that it's been almost a whole generation since Israel's become a nation is enough to let us know that we really are in the end times. Bible prophecy tells us that the children of Israel would be dispersed across the world and they would eventually return to Jerusalem. The Bible also says that once that happens, it will only be a generation until Christ returns. It was 66 years ago when Israel was, was reestablished in 1948. How much longer can a generation last? I do believe that Jesus will return and that we as Christians are not only to be ready ourselves, but to let others know about it also.